<laughs> What's the challenge is that the... Hey, Coach, what are the challenges that the Utah Jazz, you, you need to focus on when facing the Utah Jazz? Well, a lot of them. You know, I, I think uh, they're always a well-coached team. Uh, go there, you know, just dealing with him in particular. Um, you know, how you're going to play offensively and not allowing his length and, and what he does affect you offensively. Uh, defensively, you can't allow him to get behind you, you know, uh, with his rolls and his rebounds. Uh, Mitchell is, uh, you know, I think, you know, he had a great rookie year last year. He had one of those years that was up and down. This year, he's come out of the gates and he's played phenomenal, uh, especially down the stretch of games. Uh, and I think they're playing their best basketball right now. Uh, and so we're catching them uh, when they're playing well. Doc, you've had a little bit of experience with taking guys kind of from thanks, kind of from the G League and, and kind of rookie situations and putting them in the rotation. I'm thinking like Ty Wallace and Darius Thornwell and some of those mm -hmm. guys. Like, what are the keys to making those guys successful role players after maybe playing a big role in college? Well, I think that's it. Like, uh, when you get those guys, you hope that they see what they can be for that team. And that, uh, I think a lot of young guys are still looking at what they want to be, you know, instead of what they can be now uh, with the, every, whatever team they're on. And, uh, you know, guys like that, especially out of the G League, they're so hungry. They just want to play the role that the coach tells them to play. Uh, and, and, and they're hungry. They play hard. They play their role. And they're happy to be there. Um, and then we find out they can play. You know, they, they show you more, and then you start giving them more. So um, I think the G League has been absolutely wonderful for the NBA. How equipped is this team to move past a big game or a game like Christmas to play the next opponent? Have you seen that this team is easy to do that? Or is it hard to tell you? you know, I'll, I'll let you know. But listen, that was like two days ago, you know, the way, the way I look at it. Um, you know, you know, now, to be honest, everybody keeps bringing it up. But like I said, I, before the game, I said it'll be a big game. It'll be a fun game. It, it means more because right now, but then right after the game, the game was over. And it meant nothing anymore. You know, and that's how uh, we've approached it. But we don't know if they have or not. You know, you walk around the city, I'm sure they heard that they were state champions, you know, or whatever. <laughs> They didn't get a trophy, you know, or anything like that. But you know, you know what I mean by that. And so we'll see. But if we're not ready tonight, we're not going to win because the team we're playing is very good. Your Lou Williams, Montrose Harrell pick and roll has been fabulous. First, why? And second, how do you weigh to use that when it doesn't involve the two, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard? Well, the best way to use it when it doesn't George uh, involve those two is have those two on the bench at that time. <laughs> have a little bit treasure only. Uh, you know, that's actually what we do try to do at times, just so they can have, uh, get back to what they do well. Um, you know, late in the game, though, that's a tough one for us. You know, we still, you know, the other night we involved all three. We involved Tris, um, Lou, and um, Kawhi. You know, so there's always... And then sometimes we just involve the three smalls. But they, listen, they are just a good combination on their own right. They, they, they figured it out. We were smart enough to recognize it, you know, to be honest. I mean, we didn't know it two years ago what we were getting into with these two guys. And they kind of showed us, you know, a lot of times the players on the floor show us what they can do. Uh, and hopefully we're smart enough to say, wow, that combination is good. Uh, and we did see that, and it just grew. Doc, you mentioned on Wednesday uh, it was maybe a mistake to wait so long to play Jermichael Green. Is that just getting used to a full roster and trying to figure out the rotations? This I don't think season? that had anything to do with it. Um, we liked um, Pat because of his shooting early, uh, and we think he's a very physical player. Uh, so what it did was added one more player. Um, I went back with Paul George way earlier than I ever do uh, because I thought he, he, he didn't have it going early and I was trying to get him going, you know. So we knew we were going to leave somebody out once I made that decision. <laughs> that, it'll be a game-to-game thing. This is a big picture concept. Mm. So Jordan Clarkson's played 28 games of his entire yeah. NBA career on a team who's any good. All the other teams, like, 
won less games than college teams win. Yeah. What does that do to a player, do you think? And you've avoided it for most of your career, but you know, if you care about winning, you're going to lose 60-plus times a year. What yeah. does that do to a player, and how do yeah, you evolve that's, out That's of it? the question that I, I wish we could all answer. We don't know the answer. You know, you don't know the habits that they've picked up. You don't know if they come, they're so hungry to, to win that they play great. Uh, I've, I've been a big Clarkson fan for a long I've known him. I'm biased. I mean, honestly, I, I have a picture of me holding Jordan Clarkson when he was three years old in San Antonio. I knew his parents. And so I've been a fan, obviously. I think it's a great pickup. I really do. He can add scoring. Um, and we'll see, you know, because he hasn't been in a lot of winning situations. Uh, but I think he's with the right group. A uh, very serious group on the floor. I think that'll help him. How did you know his parents? Uh, just living in San Antonio. You know, his dad uh, would come over to the house. Uh, his dad uh, washed cars, did youth basketball and football. You know, he was very popular in the San Antonio area. And I think he worked with some of my kids, and there it is. Thank you. Doc, kind of piggybacking off what we were talking before with Jermichael Green and Pat Patterson, how fluid are these starting rotations going to be? Are they going to just be kind of matchup based while we're getting used we're to hoping, the roster? We're hoping. We're hoping. Like, I don't know if we can handle that or not, but that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping we can um, we can have a lineup, a team that changes lineups, you know, not game to game. I'd like to keep the same one most of the time, but when we do want to change, like the, the Laker game the other day, there was no. Nobody was, everybody was cool with it, you know, so we're hoping we have a team that is able to handle that. Some teams can't handle that. Now, I don't know if ours can or not. I think we can, uh, but we'll see. Hey, Doc, today's actually the last home game of the decade for the Clippers. Is you that have, right? Do you have a favorite moment, because you've been here for a while, to see all their best moments? Is there one that stands out more uh, than the others? Well, I don't know. That's, that's a, I have no idea. Uh, the, uh, the game the other night. <laughs> I mean, each getting the last win, you know. But I don't. I, I would say if, if there's one moment was uh, when we came back to town with the Golden State game uh, and all the Sterling stuff, which I don't love talking about. Uh, I think that that win against Golden State. I think it was Game Five. I don't even know. Uh, game Five. I thought that game is the one I'll remember the most from. Jeez, a decade? Wow. <laughs> okay, we're going to end on that. Thank you. Thanks, Joe.